All right, here we are in Adobe After Effects. I'm in version CS3, but what I'll show would apply to CS4 as well. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a solid, which is comp size and same aspect ratio as the comp, which is what we do for all BCC6, Boris Continuum 6, 3D object filters. Um, that's the recommended way to apply them. And we're going to apply BCC Extruded EPS filter in a minute, but before I do that, I'm going to go over to Illustrator and open up the EPS file, the logo file that we want to extrude, and we're going to take a look at um, some tips on how to properly prepare it for extruding using the filter. So the first thing I see here is I'm 100% scale, um, and that my logo is appearing kind of small. And while that may not matter, you know, for purposes of print and stuff like that, um, we want it to be a little bit larger to work well with the parameter ranges of the filter, so better for it to be too big than too small. Um, and that's important for the file. Another thing I notice here is, see this, this bounding box is way larger than the actual splines that I want to extrude, my actual logo, which tells me that there's probably an invisible rectangle in the file behind there. So let me ungroup, deselect that, and See, I've selected this rectangle here, and I'm going to clear, delete that, so that now when I select it, I see it looks like the only objects in the file are the actual logo that I want to extrude, because the filter is going to look at all splines in the EPS or Illustrator file. So now that we have it in the state we want, why don't we do a little save as here, and I'll just call this one mod for modified. It can be an Illustrator document or an EPS file um, for EPS. It can be an Illustrator EPS from il any Illustrator version. Um, for an Illustrator document, you actually want to save as Illustrator 8 or lower in order uh, to be compatible with the filter. So we've done that. And I'm going to go back over to Illust uh, After Effects, excuse me. And we'll, in the BC 3D Objects category, we'll apply the BC Extruded EPS filter. You see it gives me a, um, a file open dialog here because it needs something to extrude. And I'm going to choose the file we just were working on here. And so I brought that right in, and it's extruded already. Can rotate it in 3D a little bit so you can get a look at it there. Now, by default, if I look at the material, you see this keep EPS color checked box is enabled. Um, so the diffuse color parameter is disabled. If I deselect this, now you can um, basically choose the fundamental color of it using this diffuse. And you can also give it more of a highlight and highlight amount, that kind of thing. But if you have keep EPS color enabled, then the filter, which maintains a link to the EPS file um, at all times, um, is actually getting this diffuse color from the file. So if I wanted to change with this enabled, then this also allows for multiple colors um, applied to the extruded object. If I wanted to change these colors in this state, I need to go back here and actually change the color in Illustrator you know, resave the file, reload the file back here in After Effects, and it would update accordingly. So that's, um, that's that key PPS color um, feature. And let me just make a few tweaks here. Choose an extrusion style that gives a little bit thinner, leaner look to it. Um, you see that there's this texture file feature in some Use a brushed metal texture on here. I'm just going to blow it up so we can get a good look here. Some materials actually use these textures, um, and you can either use another alternate After Effects layer or one of these tiling textures. And if you do that, you're you're kind of obscuring the actual EPS color, but you you know it's possible to fade. Just get it like 50% there. It's possible to fade the texture strength so that you let some of that color through. Um, there are other materials which can use reflections. Um, so this one, besides the uh, 
the texture strength, you'd actually have the reflectivity you'd want to adjust um, to see how much of this color you actually are revealing. Um, let me go back to 100% scale here. What else do we want to look at while we're in here? The um, you apply, try some different extrusion styles. Maybe that'll do for now. Um, what I'm going to do is turn off the use built-in light and make sure I use comp lights and I'll enable use comp camera as well. And if I reveal some shied layers here that I have, you see that I have a spotlight that I already made and another sort of fill light and a camera with some animation on it. So the EPS file, like extruded text and like the other BCC 3D objects, the, um, the extruded EPS filter also has the same um, integration with the After Effects 3D environment, which is important. Another thing it shares in common with a lot of those filters are these 3D deformers, so I can actually give this logo a little bend to it, maybe a little more, and you see that that's a true, you know, 3D deformation as well. And if I toggle over here, this is like one that I previewed to RAM already, and it's got an adjustment layer with the glint and glow applied and that kind of thing. Give you an idea of the kind of logo effects you can create using Boris Continuum. So that's a quick look at the BCC Extruded EPS filter in Adobe After Effects.